Hello friends, welcome to my lair. You know, I've been uh, meaning to spruce things up here a little bit. I don't know if the Jonathan Frakes gnome is uh, cutting the mustard. So if you have any ideas, please let me know down in the comments. Anyway, today I'm going to be looking at Rodin's Albatross D3 and 172 scale. And I have to say, this one is not for the faint of heart. To begin with a positive, you can build this into a lovely little model. As you can see, I decided to do two, and I think they're at least passable. There is lots of potential for fine detail, and there are 11 different decal options. When I started out, I began with the Werner Voss plane, and built the kit out of the box, and added a little bit of rigging material from Infini models. One thing I thought was interesting is the fact that the Germans use purple in their camouflage. Apparently what happened is they copied the basic brown and green pattern from the French, but they had issues with friendly fire, so they switched the brown to purple, since at a distance it works just as well as brown, but up close it's noticeable as purple, and thus was a powerful deterrent to fellow German pilots. I always wondered why the giant iron crosses weren't sufficient, but oh well. I know fighter pilots can get tunnel vision sometimes, so I suppose it's best to have as many identifications as possible. Anyway, I did have a fun time, and I figured that no World War I collection is complete without the Bloody Baron. However, everyone and their brother seems to do the Fokker triplane for Manfred von Richthofen, which is cool, but I wanted to do the plane that he became famous in, not the plane he died in. Anyway, I was inspired by this cool portrait where his engine is exposed. This time, I also added a bunch of extra details, including a scratch-built gas tank, and all sorts of details on the engine since the bay is open. Again, I had fun making this as accurate to the portrait as possible, and I definitely think the Albatross D3 is worth the effort. Arthur Gould Lee at least thought they were hot machines, and he said that aside from Immelman and Bolka, the only people they actually knew, German fighters that is, by name, were Manfred von Richthofen and Werner Voss, and he claimed that the main reason for their fame and high scores was that they were flying the Albatross when the British were stuck flying pups and BEs and all sorts of other hopeless machines. So I think that an Albatross of some variant should be a part of your collection, and this one can be great. However, I would not recommend this model to anyone but an experienced modeler who does not mind going gray early. The molds are of very poor quality, which is a shame, since you can tell that there is supposed to be lots of intricate detail, it's just lost in the poor mold. Unfortunately, there are huge amounts of flash, many of the guide holes are not there, in my case, some of them were actually even inverted, so instead of a hole, I had a rod. The wing structure is terrible. Literally, it is the most asinine design for a wing construction that I have ever encountered. The top wing comes in three parts, a middle section and two wings that all fit together along the tiniest seams imaginable. They are very difficult to get aligned properly, and the bottom wings similarly lack good guidance. It may have been there years ago, but the guide holes were both missing on both of mine. There are lots of long, thin, fragile parts that are poorly positioned on the sprue, making it almost impossible not to break them when removing them from the sprue. The landing gear assembly has almost no support, no guide holes, and is as rickety as it could possibly be, literally to the extreme. So, if you can deal with all of those difficulties and improvise and be a little flexible, I think you can build this into a nice looking little fighter. And there you are. It can be a pain, but I think it's a worthwhile little pain. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to give me a like. You can also give me a dislike if you didn't like it, but please let me know why so I can do better next time. And please consider subscribing as well. I've got plenty more videos just like this one, and as I've started doing YouTube, I just started building all of my models on camera so you can see them too. So I've got plenty of build videos that are coming out uh, uh, all the time. Next week, I'm doing a build video of a uh, German Army bookend diorama. I'm actually really excited about that, so don't miss out. As always, I wish you joy in your lives, and I hope to see you again soon.